everyone. So now we're going to talk about slip system. Like I said last time, you know, if there's a long distance for an atom to go, it's really hard for it to slip in that direction. So a slip, slip system is a combination of a slip plane and a slip direction. Slip plane is a close packed plane. Um, it's the crystallographic plane on which slip occurs most easily. Um, best way to know this is it's the plane with the highest planar density. So think about my simple cubic one, okay? Then the closed pack plane is not this diagonal because there's actually a lot of space in between them. It would be any of the faces because in those faces, I have atoms that are touching as much as they can. If I go from a diagonal, well, I've got atoms that are touching up and down, but there's a big gap in between. Now I slip direction is the crystallographic direction along which slip occurs most easily. So it's the direction with the highest linear density. So now looking at this plane right here, this is my slip plane. Well, this is not the best direction because there's a gap there. This, however, is good and this, however, is good. So those would be my slip directions because they have the highest linear density. If you're trying to figure out what planar density is or linear density, you would find the area and you would figure out how many you know, atom cross sections are in that area. For slip direction, it's actually just the inverse of the distance between two atoms, the two closest atoms along that line. So we talked about that in the past, but you'll definitely need to review that. So please go and check that out. And I'll try to make an example video of working out these things sometime fairly soon. Okay, so let's keep on going with this. For an FCC crystal structure, the slip system is the 111 um, plane and the 110 direction. So this is the plane that cuts through one face right here at a diagonal, this face at a diagonal, and this face at a diagonal. And it would look like this. This would be the plane it would look like. Now the 110 direction then is going to be either that or that, so the family of directions, or this. So those are the directions along which they have the closest packed direction, the greatest linear density. So there's a whole lot of different slip systems for FCC. Because you know this isn't the only slip plane. I could have you know, done this instead. Go through those centers right there. Make sure it go through this center right here. And then go through this one. That's another slip plane. Or this one right here. And if I keep on drawing, it's going to look monstrous. But any configuration possible of this triangle, so touching three corners, would be a slip system. So I could bounce it to this corner, that one, that one, all kinds of corners, and get a different slip system. And of course, with those different slip systems, I also have three different directions. It all work. Which means that there is a lot of ways for things to slip in a face-centered cubic cell. Now for body-centered cubic and hexagonal close pack, we have different slip systems. You'll have to look at those to see what they are. If you've got questions, please email me. Now this slip is caused by shear stress. Slip causes the shear stress. Now where does this shear stress come from? Am I taking my planes and I'm taking a big pair of scissors and I'm trying to cut? I mean, and you could. But when we think plastic deformation, we usually think, isn't that when we like stretch things or compress things? Like, wait a minute, if I remember right, you know, it's, we did this a while ago, but if I remember right, this is like normal stress because, you know, this force right here is normal to my plane. So why am I showing shear stress? That's like the cutting stress. Where does that come from? Well, it comes because even though we have a force, and yes, that is perpendicular to this flat cross-section right here, our slip plane is at an angle to that force, which means that part of our force, a component of that force is along that angled plane. And there's another component which is not. So that angled component of our force will try to cause a shear. And that's what's called our resolved shear stress. It's going to cause that resolved shear stress. So that resolved shear stress is going to depend on the orientation 
um, that is normal to the slip plane and slip direction in the tensile force F. So our F prime is going to be F cosine of, I think, lambda. Draw a blank for a second. Um, and that is going to be this F prime right here that is going to be along our slip direction in that slip plane. So it's the component of our force that is parallel to that plane. And our area is going to be slightly different. It's going to be the area over cosine phi because you can see that the area has gotten larger. It was a circle, now it's an ellipse. And so it has become larger by being divided by cosine of phi. Okay, now let's get rid of those right there. Here is our lambda, there is our phi, okay? Lambda and phi. They're not necessarily the same thing because this is going along the slip direction. It's in this plane, but its orientation is along the slip direction. So if we combine those two, we get our resolved shear stress, which is going to be the force over the area times cosine lambda over times cosine of phi. And force over area is simply our normal stress. So we see here is our resolved shear stress is going to be equal to our normal stress times this. Okay? And this will be taken from the orientation of our slip plane and its slip direction to the line of action of our force. Now, on a specific slip system, dislocation, dislocation motion will occur when our resolved shear stress reaches a critical value. This critical value is the one below which no um, motion occurs, and above this value, motion will begin. And so this is usually somewhere between 0.1 megapascals and 10 megapascals. Now in a single crystal, there are multiple slip systems and a variety of orientations. And so what we really care about is the one for which the resolved shear stress is highest. That will be the most favorably oriented slip system. You're wondering, well, why this? Because wouldn't we want the one that's the least because it's going to move first? No. We want the, the one with the least critical resolved shear stress is going to be the one that's going to move first. But all of the, mater the material has a critical resolved shear stress, not just a particular um, low direction. And so we're going to be looking for the slip system that has the largest resolved stress because that one is going to move first. It's going to hit that critical resolved shear stress first, that particular orientation. So from this, we can then figure out what our yield strength of our crystal is, what the yield strength of a single crystal is, which is going to be equal to my critical resolved shear stress divided by this max orientation. So remember, we saw that the resolved shear stress is equal to our normal stress times cosine lambda, cosine phi. And so now we're just solving for the stress at which we will reach that critical resolved shear stress. So if we apply this, we will begin to cause dislocations. Now, what does it look like? If we're looking at a macroscopic scale, what we see is that these slip planes right here, we're seeing motion, and the motion is moving along the slip planes. Um, or it might look like a single line if you're looking at a photograph because you know you won't be able to see necessarily the full 3D shape. And so when this happens, when it slips, it's not like it's like you know <laughs> butter under here that's like holding it in place. No, it's it's bound again after it moves. It moves and it's bound. It moves and it's bound. It moves and it's bound. Um, and after it stops moving, you know after it binds again, well this is a little bit longer than it was to begin with. And so that's where our plastic deformation comes from. The planes slip because of the force reached the, we applied a, um, a normal stress, which was above our yield stress. That yield stress is defined based on our critical resolved shear stress and the most beneficial angle. And from that, we had problems. So that's it for this time. Thanks for listening. Go back and start looking at the you know, like the linear density and the planar density. It's going to be helpful for these kind of problems. And also making sure that you understand your directions and your planes. I gave you those um, different tools which could help you with that. You know, the, um, the, the visualization tool for the simple cubic and the bicenter cubic and the face center cubic. So use those to your advantage. I hope it helps you. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time.
Goodbye.